In this lesson, we are going to discuss the reproductive system. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify the parts and functions of the male and female reproductive systems and compare and contrast the male and female reproductive systems. The reproductive system mainly functions for the survival of species through sexual reproduction. This means that there should be the union of gametes, particularly the egg cell of females and the sperm cell of males. To satisfy the function of the system, the system also functions in gamete production. Aside from this, the reproductive system shares functions with the endocrine system by producing hormones that are essential for the development of certain characteristics and sexual functions like maintenance of pregnancy and gamete production. With these functions, the reproductive system is the only organ system which differs in males and females. Let us now discuss the parts and functions of the reproductive system in males and females. The reproductive system for each sex is divided into two, the internal and the external reproductive system. The internal reproductive system usually functions for the sexual reproduction, while the external reproductive system usually functions for sexual intercourse. However, there are some organs which have these overlapping functions. Let us first discuss the internal male reproductive system. This functions mainly for sperm production and transport. The main reproductive organ of males is the testis. This organ occurs in pairs and seems to hang in a cord. The sperm cells develop inside the testis in a series of tubes known as the seminiferous tubules. Aside from this, testosterone is produced in the testis. Mature sperm cells are later on stored in a tube beside the testis known as the epididymis. These sperm cells are stored until they are released from the body through a forceful expulsion known as ejaculation. During ejaculation, the sperm cells will pass through a long tube called the vas deferens. The vas deferens will deliver the sperm cells in another organ for lubrication or addition of fluids for the nutrition and motility of the sperm cells. This is the ejaculatory duct. After lubrication, the seminal fluid which contains the semen and sperm cells will be ejected through the urethra. This is another tube-like organ that functions for transport. This organ is also part of the excretory system since it is also the passageway of urine. If a male is considering family planning by not wanting to have any more children, a procedure called vasectomy is done. In vasectomy, the vas deferens is cut and tied which blocks the sperm cell from coming out of the epididymis. This will lead to male sterilization or permanent contraception. However, the male can still ejaculate. The sperm cells which are produced by the testis are only absorbed by the body. The only difference during ejaculation is that the seminal fluid does not contain any sperm cell. Now, let us discuss the components of the seminal fluid and the organs which produce semen. Semen is used for sperm lubrication. The ejaculatory duct lubricates the sperm cells from the following organs. First, the seminal vesicles produce a fructose-rich fluid that provides sperm with energy since the sperm cells will be expanding a lot of energy to reach the egg cell. Aside from fructose, this organ also produces prostaglandins which contribute to the motility and viability of the sperm and proteins that cause light coagulation reactions in the semen after ejaculation. Second, the cowper's gland or bulbourethral glands are small, pea-sized glands located near the base of the penis. These glands produce a mucus-like alkaline fluid which neutralizes the acidic nature of the urethra because of the urine and the acidic nature of the female reproductive tract. Aside from this, this fluid also provides some lubrication to the tip of the penis during sexual intercourse. Lastly, the prostate gland is a firm and dense structure just below the urinary bladder. It produces a milky-colored alkaline fluid which greatly contributes to the motility of the sperm. After discussing the internal male reproductive system, let us now discuss the external male reproductive system. The main external reproductive organ of males is the penis. It is important to take note that the penis is not the main reproductive organ of males. The penis only functions for sexual intercourse. This is to deposit the sperm-containing seminal fluid inside the female reproductive tract. 
For the penis to function during sexual intercourse, it needs to be erect. During sexual arousal, nerve messages begin to stimulate the penis. Impulses from the brain and local nerves cause the pair of muscles called the corpora cavernosa to relax, allowing the blood to flow in and fill the open spaces. The pressure here makes the penis expand, creating an erection. Another important muscle of the penis is the corpus spongiosum. The function of the corpus spongiosum in erection is to prevent the urethra from pinching closed, thereby maintaining the urethra as a viable channel for ejaculation. The corpus cavernosum and corpus spongiosum comprise the penis shaft or the body of the penis. Another important part of the penis is the glans penis which is the head of the penis. The glans penis contains a high concentration of nerve endings. This makes it the most sensitive part of the penis. The glans is covered by a loose layer of skin called the foreskin or prepuce. In some men, this is removed by a procedure called circumcision. If left uncircumcised, risk of getting urinary tract infection is increased due to the buildup of smegma, which is a cheese-like sebaceous secretion in the folds of the skin which would allow the growth of harmless bacteria that cause a certain odor. Another organ of the external male reproductive system is the scrotum. The scrotum is a reproductive organ which contains layers of skin and is found under the penis. The main purpose of the scrotum is to protect the testes and provide them the right temperature for sperm production and development. The raphe is a region the scrotum divides the organ into two, the left and the right. The scrotal septum separates the two testes. The scrotum is about 2 to 3 degrees Celsius lower than the normal body temperature. Inside the scrotum are some important muscles which aid in the temperature maintenance of the testes. These are the cremaster muscles and the dartus muscles. By contracting at the same time, the muscles of the dartus and cremaster will lift the testes in cold weather, bringing the testes closer to the body and decreasing the surface area of the scrotum in order to maintain heat. Alternatively, the scrotum relaxes as the external temperature increases, pushing the testes away from the center of the body and increasing the scrotal surface region, facilitating heat loss. After discussing the male reproductive system, let us now discuss the female reproductive system. The female reproductive system has numerous functions, but in this discussion, we are going to limit our discussion on the internal female reproductive system's function on pregnancy since this is the main reproductive function of females. The main reproductive organ in females is the ovary. Just like in males, females have a pair of the main reproductive organ. These produce the female sex hormones estrogen and progesterone. At birth, a female baby has around 70,000 immature egg cells in each ovary. The eggs mature and are released during puberty. After being released from the ovary, the egg cell is transported in the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes function as a transport organ with the help of ciliated and non-ciliated cells. The ciliated cells propel the egg cells to the uterus. On the other hand, the non-ciliated cells produce secretions in order to aid the ciliated cells with propulsion. Fertilization occurs in this organ. After being fertilized, the egg will travel down the uterus. The uterus is a hollow muscular organ that lies between the urinary bladder and the rectum. It has a very soft lining that holds the fertilized egg and nurtures it throughout its prenatal growth and development. The uterus has three layers. The endometrium is the innermost layer. It maintains the structural integrity of the uterus and is the part that usually sheds off in some parts of the menstrual cycle. The myometrium is the middle layer and the thickest one. It contains smooth muscles and responsible for uterine contractions. Lastly, the perimetrium is the outermost layer of the uterus. It provides support to the entire organ. At the lower portion of the uterus is the cervix. The cervix expands once the baby is ready to be born. Cervical mucus is produced by this organ. This mucus facilitates the transport and nourishment of the sperm to aid in fertilization. It also plays a role in hormonal signaling. It can also be used as an indicator of a woman's fertility. The last organ of the internal female reproductive system is the vagina. It 
it is an elastic, muscular canal that connects the external reproductive system to the cervix. The primary function of the vagina is for sexual intercourse or coitus. It receives the penis and sperm during sexual intercourse and passes blood during menstruation. It is also the passageway of the baby during delivery. Hence, it is also called the birth canal. These are the parts of the internal female reproductive system. When considering female sterility or permanent contraception, the fallopian tube is tied to prevent the egg cell from being fertilized. This is called tubal ligation. It also prevents the sperm cell in reaching the egg cell. Now, let us discuss the external female reproductive system. Collectively, the external female reproductive system is called the vulva. First, this mound of tissue is prominent and is commonly covered in pubic hair. The mons pubis acts during sexual intercourse as a means of cushioning. Sebaceous glands are also found in the mons pubis, which secrete pheromones to simulate sexual attraction. Second, the clitoris is the pleasure center of the vulva. It doesn't have a major role in reproduction like the penis or vagina. The clitoris becomes engorged and highly sensitive during sexual activity. The next structure is the urinal opening. This is not part of the reproductive system of females, but the part of the vulva. It only functions as the exit of urine, making it a part of the urinary system in females. Below the urinal opening is the vaginal orifice. It simply means the opening to the vagina itself. Just like the vagina, it functions in sexual intercourse, birth, and menstruation. The vaginal orifice may also include the hymen. Take note that not all women have a hymen and that its thickness varies from one woman to another. Covering the vulva is the labia majora. It contains sweat glands and oil secreting glands. It literally translates to major lips or big lips. Inside the labia majora is the labia minora. The labia minora serves to protect the vaginal and urethral openings. It literally translates to minor lips or smaller lips. To end this lesson, let us now compare the male and female reproductive systems. First, let us compare the gametes or the sex cells. In males, the gametes are the sperm cells. In females, these are the egg cells. Now, for the main reproductive organs, for males, these are the testes. For females, these are the ovaries. For the organs for intercourse or coitus, in males, penis is used. For females, the vagina is used. Next, let's discuss the organs for transport. Sperm is stored in the epididymis and it will travel through the vas deferens, ejaculatory duct, and the urethra. In females, the egg cell will travel to the fallopian tube, to the uterus, cervix, and to the vagina. Lastly, for the external organs, in males, we have the penis and scrotum. For females, it is called the vulva. And that ends our discussion on the reproductive system.